Hello Flow Graders and welcome to one more episode of the Flow Grade Show where I'm talking to world famous biohackers, experts on flow, CrossFit legends, movie actors and many other very interesting people about their strategies to optimize well-being and performance. Today I'm talking to Stephen Kotler, an absolute flow expert and the founder of the Flow Genome Project, a project with the goal to understand the biochemistry underlying the state of flow. Now, Stephen is a very successful best-selling author, and he's written the book, The Rise of Superman, Decoding the Science of Ultimate Human Performance. Now, he was the keynote speaker at last year's Bulletproof Conference, where I met him, and I had the chance to ask him a couple questions for you. Now, uh, stay tuned and check them out. Max from Biotracker here in Pasadena at the Biohacking Conference, uh, hosted by Bulletproof, and I'm here with Stephen Kotler, the author of The Rise of Superman, and the founder of the Flow Genome Project, and a true expert about the concept of flow. Stephen, thank you very much for being here My with pleasure. us. And uh, in your own words, uh, what is flow? So, flow is technically defined as an optimal state of consciousness, right? A state of consciousness where you feel your best and you perform your best. Flow describes those moments of total absorption, where you get so sucked in by the task at hand that action awareness starts to merge, your sense of self, self-consciousness disappear completely. Your time passes strangely, it dilates technically, which means it slows down. Sometimes you get that freeze frame effect, if you've seen the matrix or been in a car crash. Sometimes it speeds up and five hours will pass by in like five minutes. And throughout, all aspects of performance, mental and physical, go through the roof. So what are the most effective triggers? I heard you talk about, about 17 triggers, but what are the, let's say, three most effective ones for well, you? For me, per, so First flow all, triggers... in general, and then maybe for you yes. personally. So flow triggers, these are preconditions that produce more flow. They're all individual, right? Different people prefer different triggers. For me, I love high consequences. As an action event sport athlete, high consequences are a big trigger for me. Creativity, as a writer, creativity is, is another flow trigger. It's actually, when you look under the hood of that, it's pattern recognition, it's the linking together of ideas. That's a very important trigger in my life. And a rich environment, lots of novelty, complexity, and unpredictability. Those are the triggers that work best for me. All right, so for someone uh, for whom the concept is very new, what could that person do to increase flow in their lives immediately? Is there something that you could recommend? Reading Rise of Superman. <laughs> All right, that's right on. Um, there's, there, I mean, this, this isn't like self-help, right? This isn't three things I can tell you to do right now that you can apply. And this is a, it's a long practice. But any of the 17 flow triggers, right? The people who have the most flow in their lives are the people who pack their lives with these flow triggers. So a little bit more risk taking, a little bit more novelty, a little bit more creativity, all these things just start to slowly raise the levels and figure out what works for you. Mostly, the most important thing to know is it's totally individual, right? What gets me into flow is not going to be what gets you into flow, right? They're, they're going to map out differently and it's all about conducting the experiment. Got to run the experiment on yourself. So I noticed for myself that when I write at night, and I oftentimes do that, that I do get into that state where I lose track of time and I continue working and I, I just wake up at like three in the morning and I notice, wow, I've got so much work done. Is that already, can I say that this is flow already? Well, so one of the things people don't often know about flow is it's a spectrum experience, right? So it's like any emotion. Take anger. You can be a little irked or you can be homicidally murderous. Same emotion. Flow exists the same way. So there's micro flow, which is a light flow state. It has a couple of maybe uninterrupted concentration, time dilation, so like you're focused and you don't notice time is passing. Or you can have a macro flow state where kind of all of the characteristics of flow show up at once. It really feels like a quasi-mystical experience, right? It's a really deep, powerful experience. Most people spend about 5% of their work life in flow without even knowing it. One of the things, I mean, you asked earlier, what can people start to do? They can start to educate themselves a little bit more about flow because aware, just awareness of what this state is and how to precipitate it tends to just on its own increase the amount of flow in people's lives. So how long can one person actually stay in flow? Do you have like a maximum time that you... It's an notice? interesting question. Um, so the neurochemicals that show up in flow 
they have very short lifespans, 20 minutes, half hour, whatever. Some average flow state is probably an hour to an hour and a half total, right? In terms of stretching out. But there are examples I hadn't experienced where I wrote almost all of a book in a flow state. And I would write all day in a flow state and I'd pop out of it for a couple hours, go to sleep and wake up. And as soon as I start writing, I would snap back in. And that was like two and a half weeks straight. There's an altruism triggered flow state known as helper's high. That's unusual because it seems to produce a couple day long flow state, one to two days. So we don't really know. On average, it's short, an hour, hour and a half that that long. But there, there are cases where people can stay in flow for weeks, sometimes months at a time on long projects, things like that. You see it with startup teams, right? Startup teams will come together to, to build a company and they'll spend three, four, five months in that launch phase in constant flow states, right? So, so it can happen. All right, and you founded the Flow Genome Project. What is your like main objective or goal for that project? What do you aim to achieve? Like Not in terms of finding out more about flow, but is there a specific objective that you can well, point Well, from a research perspective, right, so we've got about 150 years of flow psychology, so what's going on in the mind. We've got 25 years or so of neurobiology, what's going on in the brain, and physiology, what's going on in the body, is brand new, right? The measurement technology just started to show up and we're starting to get better at it. We want to map the psychology onto the neurobiology, onto the physiology. That's our big research goal. And obviously the goal with all this gear is we want to train up people into flow, right? This is ultimate human performance, flow states. This is everybody's birthright. Everybody can have access to flow. We know copious, copious amounts of research shows that flow is ubiquitous. It shows up in anyone, anywhere, provided certain initial conditions are met. So we want to train people up in flow. We want to teach people how to get more out of themselves and their lives. Do you think that there's going to be a device or any measure that peop where people can actually measure flow very easily? We are, that is, that is what is absolutely next for us. The first step in creating that heat map we talked about is to come up with a handful of biophysical correlates. We think we've isolated what they are. We're kind of building and designing the experiment right now. So I think the answer is yes. How robust is it going to be? It's going to get better over time, right? Um, and, you know, some of it, when you really get into the deep levels and you want to measure neurochemicals, right? We can't measure neurochemicals. I mean, now we've gotten to the point that we can measure neurochemicals in your brain, but how do I do it ethically, right? I can't cut your head open and put a sensor in, right? So we're going to need things like optical sensors that can measure, you know, the molecular weight through the skin, that kind of stuff. There are people working on them. There's an oxytocin center being developed at University of California, San Diego, that I think shoots a pulse of light through your skin into your blood and looks at molecular weight. Those things are a ways out. It sounds like future tech at this point, but they're coming and that the diagnostics are going to get better and better. All right. Last question uh, that we ask everyone pretty much on the conference at the conference is if you were on a deserted island and there's so many gadgets and supplements here, but you can name whatever. What are the three things that you take with you in terms of uh, biohacking stuff? Like, let's say you have everything in terms of nutrition you're taking care of, but there you can take three supplements or gadgets with you, what do you take? <laughs> I'm the wrong guy to ask these questions because um, I would take a good pillow so I got a great night's sleep because I think there's nothing more important to performance than sleep. Um, that's, a, that's a great one. I, supplement wise, turmeric is probably my favorite supplement, cleans out the lungs, really good anti-inflammatory and probably medical marijuana. All right. All right. Very cool. Stephen, thank you so much for uh, the, the interview and for sharing this. And this is a whole bunch of knowledge. It's so interesting. I'm so excited about what direction you're going to go into with that whole project. Good luck with that. And I hope to see you at another conference. Thanks. Thanks for coming out and playing. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to this episode with Stephen Cutler. And we have many very cool episodes in stock for you. So make sure you don't miss any of them by subscribing to this podcast and leave us a review and give us a thumbs up. Also, check out our really cool content on flowgrid.com and you'll see me next time.